So in today's video, there's three main parts. The first thing, we're gonna have a look at some of the multiplication challenges that you sent through uh, from the previous few days, which will be great, really looking forward to that. The second thing then is, is actually understanding uh, something that's really important for written methods for division. So I learned a method to divide without ever knowing why it worked. And this, when we look at how numbers can be split, can be partitioned when we divide, will help to understand why these written methods for division work without actually using them. And then we're going to look at that I know and so technique again to make more connections with division. So let's kick off with uh, some of the questions that you've developed recently. Well, I love this pattern that we explored earlier in the week. And again, I just love the example questions that you've managed to write with the different possible answers. So again, this one was from Jamie. I think of two numbers. When I add them, I get 24. When I multiply them, I get more than 130. What could my numbers be? I'm going to use this one as an example of, of how to unpick this kind of question. Um, so um, we've got these different possible combinations of numbers that when I add them, I get 24, like 12 and 12. And I know that for this, for numbers that add to make 24, that will have the largest product, 12 and 12, uh, 144. And then I kind of almost work down, uh, like up, if you like, and down in the combinations. And I've got to think, well, how much can I make that difference increase by until I get below 130? So I know 14 and 10, that will add up to 24. And again, the, the product will be, um, will be 140. And then 15 times 9, well, that, that works as well. And then the first one that doesn't work in this example, in Jamie's example, Jamie's example, is 16 and 8. And so that's when I've put this one in red. Because, uh, te well, I'd, I'd probably do 8, 8 to 64, then double of 64, 128. That just falls below this 130 mark. So a brilliantly designed question from Jamie. Well, I also had this one coming through from Robbie as well. So we'll have a go at this one. And again, I love this one as well. I think of two numbers. When I add my numbers, I get 14. When I multiply my numbers, I get more than 35. What could my numbers be? Now, um, can you come up with an answer or different possible answers? Or do you know how many answers there are to Robbie's question? Pause the video and have a go. Okay, should we have a little look here? Um, so I, I'd start with uh, seven and seven, and I know that will give me my largest um, product with two numbers with a sum of 14. Um, and then essentially I'll, I'll work down and I'll think, well, where do I get to a combination where I fall below 35? So I could still go for 10 multiplied by four, would get me to 40. Um, so all of these combinations, of course, work because they're in between 7 and 7 and 10 and 4. 11 and 3 is the first one that doesn't work. So there, four possible answers. Now, again, a fantastic question coming through from Joel here. Really like this one. Slightly different in its design. I think of two numbers. If I add them together, the sum is 22. When I multiply my numbers, the product is more than 40, but less than 100. So now there's like a limit on either end. What could my numbers be? Pause the video and see if you can find uh, a different answer or different answers, or do you know how many possible answers there are to Joel's question? Okay, let's have a little look. Well, Joel has been very kind to me, and there we go uh, for his solutions. So numbers in this range have a product that is more than 40 and less than 100. Again, fabulous, fabulous thinking. Love it when those questions are designed by yourself. Such deep thinking there. Well done. So today's video is called Connections in Division. And what we're going to look at is some of the key steps that you need to really understand division. Now, all the written methods to, for division are based on this understanding of, of how numbers are broken down that we're going to show first. And then we're going to go to that I know so technique to really build understanding. So really, we've got kind of two main parts here. We're going to start off by looking at some of the pictures that can really help build understanding. So let's say 36 divided by 9, and we know that that's 4. If we know, well, 36, how many 9s in 36? There are 4. And this picture can demonstrate that, because I've got a 9, and how many 9s? And another 9, and another 9, and another 9. So 4, lots of 9, is 36. So I don't need to break up the 36 when I'm dividing by 9, um, because I already know how many 9s in 36. There are 4. But if I'm doing 38 divided by 9, all of a sudden I do need to break the 38 up. I need to split it up into 36 and 2. 
because here I, I've got 36 in this section here. That's the lot of, lots of nine that go into 38. And then there's this two left over. So here I actually split my 38 into 36, a multiple of nine, the biggest multiple of nine I can, and two. Um, and, and actually when we're doing written methods for division, it would maybe without knowing it, that this is actually kind of what we're doing. Now again, it, this is an example we looked at yesterday, 52 divided by four. Now you might not know this, this number fact because you know there'll be a limit to the times tables that you've memorized so you might not know how many fours in 52 so then we just need to think well how can i break down my 52 into amounts where i know how many fours will be in each of those pieces so again the example we gave yesterday is partitioning the 52 into 40 and 12 and um, so we know that the answer then will be 13. so how many parts so let's have a look 240 divided by 6, 78 divided by 6, and 80 divided by 6. How many parts are there when I break those numbers down? Well, actually, for the first calculation, I think I would just keep it as 240. I will just keep that one part because I know how many 6s are in 240. Uh, there are 40. Uh, 6 times 40 is 240. Well, what about 78 times 6? Um, now, now there, I'm likely to split the 78 down into 60 and 18. Just because I won't, I won't have a known fact for how many sixes are in seventy-eight. So I'll break that down into sixty, and then another piece of of, of eighteen, and that adds up to seventy-eight. Well, what about eighty divided by six, which is obviously two more than seventy-eight divided by six? Well, there I'll actually split the eighty into a piece of sixty, a multiple of six, and then another piece of eighteen, and then I'll have the two, the remainder of two. So I've got, I've got um, ten lots of six here. I've got three lots of six there, and then I've got this remainder of two. So even though this is a smaller number than, for example, much smaller than 240, I actually end up splitting the 80 into three parts when I divide. Now, have a look at these examples, and I want you to think, how many parts will you need to break the numbers into to divide? Um, so pause the video and have a go. So let's have a look, how many parts? Um, 56 divided by four, um, I would generally split the 56. There's other ways this can be done, but I'd generally split the 56 into 40 and 16. If you're using a bus stop method, that's essentially what happens there. Um, what about 59 divided by four? Well, of course, it's very similar to this question. What's the difference? Well, I'll have a piece of 40, that's a multiple of four, a 16, a multiple of four, and there'll be this three left over. So even though it's quite a you know relatively small number, I actually have three parts here. About 172 divided by four. Well, I'll split the 172 into 160, uh, 40 lots of four, and then that 12 as well. Now, this is the kind of the last part of the video that we're just gonna have a look at, this technique, I know and so. So using our understanding of division, where I'm thinking, well, how many fours in 72? There's 18, and how I can use that to work out related questions. So let's have a little look here. So for the first one, 68 divided by four, well, of course it's one less four, so it will be 17, and that's how they link. Well, what about how many fours in 68, 17? So in 680, there'll be 170. Um, what about in 683? 683 divided by 4. Well, of course, it will be the same, except we've got this remainder of 3. OK, your turn. Um, so I know that 120 divided by 6 is 20. Um, so pause the video and see how can you use those questions in that little sequence. Let's have a little look. Um, so, well, another... I've got another 18 here, so that's another three, lots of six, 23. So 141 divided by six in comparison is three more, of course, 23 uh, remainder three. Now again, you might normally give that as a fraction. You might normally give it as 23 and three six or 23 and a half. Um, well, what about 141 divided by three? Ah, that's an interesting one. What's the link here when we've got this remainder? And what do we find? Actually, it's 47. Um, made up from doubling the 23, but also, of course, we have this remainder of three. Love that connection there. So today's task, you find them by clicking on the blue link below this video. 
Um, and for the first part of either task A or task B, um, you might be able to work out the answers to these questions, but the main thing is how do you partition the number to divide? So when you're doing 176 divided by 8, how do you partition the 176? Which numbers do you break it into? And think, I, I, I can work out how many lots of 8 in this number and in that number maybe, if, if you partition into two numbers. Um, and then equally, there's these two sets of I know and so questions. So can you see the combination like the, between the question above and the one below? How can the one above help you to answer the one below? So have a think. What, what's changed here? I'm still dividing by 8 here. How much more is 272 than 256? There's a suggestion for that first one there. Um, and there's task A and task B. And equally, you might want to have a little go at the back at, at one of our broken calculator questions that involve division. So how can you ma manipulate those numbers to do the calculation with that broken calculator? Answers at the bottom, and I shall see you again tomorrow.